I see that uh, Ron Paul is again on his um, soapbox uh, jabbering. Well, not jabbering. He's he's offering his, his free market theories, which are very simplistic and but I I find, and oh, of course, the Ron Paul cult, cult. Oh, did I call him cult or I? Well, movement. Oh, they want to call themselves a movement. I. It's really more like a cult, because they haven't convinced a lot of people outside of YouTube or the internet. But um, what what bothers me about Ron Paul is his his strange omissions and his emphasis, emphases, I guess. Now he was just complaining about um, inflation. He was worried, very worried. Ron Paul was so so very very so so very very worried about inflation. You know what I'm really worried about? I think a lot more people are really worried about unemployment. Ron, Ron, do you care about unemployment? Are you more concerned about inflation eating away at your little pile of gold there, pile of gold and silver? It's mentioned in one of the clauses in the Constitution. You're really concerned about inflation, but you really couldn't care less about people losing jobs, right? Oh, and let me ask for the Ron Paul fanatic cult. What is Ron Paul's prediction now for the unemployment rate? I know that's a sore subject. You love to talk about the interest rates, and you love to talk about the money supply and the exchange rates and all that. You can talk endlessly maybe about that, and you can even come up with some statistics and figures. But I want to know, what is the unemployment rate going to be, Ron? You look into your crystal ball. It, it In my state now, the unemployment rate is 9%. Now, when the companies start folding, like you want them to, you want these manufacturing companies to go folding because they haven't survived they haven't survived in the rough and tumble world of uh, free market e- economics, which, of course, is not true because, well, China doesn't really have a free market, Japan doesn't really have a free market, and Europe doesn't have a free market, right? But that's okay, Ron. I'm, t- I'm just telling you where there aren't free markets and where governments actually subsidize their industries. Like in, And even Canada doesn't have a free market. Well, we can go on and on about where there isn't free markets. But what is the what is the suitable you you you're talking about interest rates you think interest rates should go up and the money should apply should go down but what do you think is the really the correct healthy can we use the word healthy unemployment rate because I'm guessing that the unemployment rate in my area which is the rust belt which we used to manufacture things we used to make things lots of things not just automobiles here we oh tractors um, metal uh, other kinds of metal we, we washing we used to make washing machines up north we uh, up uh, I don't know, to the city up not far from me um, we used to make furniture as well um, well whatever I um, we're and we used to make uh, this town that I'm used to we we used to make uh, cereal I'm in the cereal city so guess where I'm from um uh so what is and do you really care Ron how high the unemployment rate goes let's say if we overshoot let's say if it goes a little too well what's too high Ron get your crystal ball out because you are the font of wisdom and truth and knowledge and so is it going to be 15% or 20% and what happens when the unemployment rate, and you tell me, because you're not only an economist, you're probably a little bit of a social scientist, too. So what happens when the unemployment rate goes up frequently? Well, you get crime sometimes goes up, sometimes. It doesn't necessarily have to go up, but crime does go up. Um, and divorce goes up, and poverty goes up, and homelessness goes up, and... Well, there's a lot of social problems. So, Ron, I want you to address head-on and don't do- dodge and dance because you're the you're the man. You're the man. You tell the truth. You tell it like it is. So don't don't. T- I'm not real real interested so much at this point in the proper interest rate. Although 
that is an issue, the proper interest rate or, a, I don't know, a healthy interest rate. But what do you think about unemployment? And, and the other thing is, well, oh, and let me go back to your hero, uh, the, the hero of the right wing, or at least the hero was the hero, maybe he still is, is Ronald Mag Magnus Reagan. Wasn't the deficit spending, Ron, you tell me, Ron, the deficit spending, and you don't like deficit spending, right, and the printing of money and the borrowing of money, when did that really begin to occur? That began to occur just on a massive scale. What two-term president who cut taxes and told us there was such a thing as supply-side economics and we didn't have to worry about deficits and we didn't have to worry about that because the, the economy would magically grow and catch up and erase the deficits? What president was that? There were actually three terms of Republican presidents. Where you cut, ooh, did you cut, you cut uh, taxes on the rich? And then George Bush cut taxes on the rich too, didn't he? And more deficit spending. So you have, but wait, let's go back to the first de huge deficit spender. That was Ronald Magnus, Ronald Magnus Reagan, wasn't it, Ron? And the cutting of the taxes didn't work. Do you hear that? Do I have to say that again? Ronald Magnus Reagan cut taxes on the wealthy. He cut the the upper brackets, and they, and I think they indexed the brackets as well. The index of the brackets was okay. Yeah, I guess that was okay. But Ronald Magnus cut, uh, and and you know what? He cut that, and he didn't cut spending. But that doesn't seem to bother that many people at that point because of supply side. Supply side was going to take care of the whole problem. Well, deficit spending continued to occur, and and guess what? The 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 economy didn't grow like gangbusters like it was supposed to. Even when you cut taxes, when you cut taxes automatically, it's it's a law. It's a, it's like a law of gravity. It automatically, when you cut taxes, especially on the rich, because the rich will work even harder. Instead of working 14-hour days, the rich will work 18-hour days, and they'll produce even more, especially on Wall Street. Those rich people on Wall Street... They will borrow and lend and throw money right and left. Oh, they'll be even more productive than they were at a lower end. Yeah, okay, yeah, baloney. Okay, I know. So um, deficit spending started under Ronald Magnus Reagan, and you Republicans didn't seem really concerned about that at that point. And then it continued to, uh, uh, to go under George Bush, and you, you really weren't concerned about that then either. So get out the crystal ball.